Okay, now we're gonna look at multiplying fractions, proper fractions. Notice that there are no mixed numbers in this one. Okay, so Tom has three-fourths of a pan of lasagna and his friends ate two-thirds of this amount. What fraction of the whole pan did they eat? To do this, I'm going to show you a method. We're going to use the denominators here to split up this box. So first, I'm gonna split this up into roughly four equal parts. It doesn't have to be perfect. And the other one's three, so I'm gonna split it up into three equal parts. Okay, this number right here tells you how many we can color over, and this one says how many we can color down. So I can only cover three, color three over. One, two, three, because this portion over here was already eaten. Now I can only cover two down. So one, two, three, only two down. So three over and two down. Now I'm just going to count the spaces that we ate. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they ate six out of the total 12, which we know reduces to one half. So when asked this question, what fraction of the whole pan did they eat? Well, they ate one half of that pan. Sometimes multiplying fractions can give you really big numbers, but we can do a method called cross multiplying to help that. So right now we have 3 fourths times 5 sixths. When we say cross, we mean diagonal, okay? And you look to see if there's a relationship between those numbers. So let's look at the 3 and the 6 first. Does 3 go into 6? Of course it does. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 here is going to give us 1, and 6 divided by 3 is going to give us 2. That just made that problem a lot easier. Now we do one times five, and then we just kind of just multiply across and multiply the bottom. So one times five is five, and four times two is eight. What this helps with is we don't have to simplify as much. So let's look at the next problem. First things first, we got to put that 18 over one, okay? Because 18 over one is the same as 18. Now let's cross multiply. 2 and 1, well, 1 can never be reduced, so you have to leave that alone. But what about 3 and 18? 3 and 18, they do share a common factor of 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 18 divided by 3 is 6. So now we get 12. 2 times 6 is 12 over 1, which is the same as 12. And that's how you use cross-multiplying to help you figure out and limit the amount of simplifying that you do in, when you're multiplying fractions. Using the cross multiplication method, we're going to go through some of these problems. First problem, 3 fifths times 5 ninths. So again, we're going to look diagonally. 3 and 9, 3 and 9 share the factor of 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3. But look, 5 and 5 share the same factor because they're the same number. You can divide both by 5 to get 1. They kind of cancel out. So now 1 times 1, is one, and one times three is three. So we get the answer of one third. Sometimes, as in the next problem, you can't simplify. You can't simplify one and six, and you can't simplify six and five. So you just have to multiply across. So again, you just take one times five, and then six times six. It's important to keep the numerators and denominators together. So one times five is five, six times six is 36. And there's our answer. Now let's look at the last one. Again, sometimes you can't simplify, but in this one you can. So, one and four you can't simplify, and one and three you can't, one and three you can't, four and two, however, you can. So let's look at um, the four. First, two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. So now we can do our math. One times one times one, well that's gonna give us an easy one. 3 times 2 is 6 times 3 is 18. So that's how we get the answer of 1 18th in that problem. And that is how you use cross multiplication to help you out with multiplying fractions.